we have the largest monthly palette rankings that I've ever done because I'm going to be ranking all of the palettes that I tried from worst to best in the last two months. So the month prior, I skipped filming a monthly rankings because I only tried like five palettes and I was like mm, I'll just push those into the next month well the next month there was so many palettes at launch so now I have to rank 19 palettes and I'm feeling very uneasy with the rankings so I just like need to rip the band-aid off and get started right <laughs> a lot of what launched this month were rose palettes so six of these 19 palettes I ranked individually but now these are even more updated rankings because I've now had even more time multiple weeks since filming the rose palette rankings to re-rank them and then see how they work within all of the other palettes that I tried. So let's start off with the worst palette that I tried in the last couple of months, number 19, and that is going to be the Huda Beauty Color Block Palette in the shade orange and purple. I was really intrigued by these. The most interesting thing is there is a cake liner embedded into the palette, but this one is highly disappointing. I expect more from Huda Beauty. I mean, generally speaking, this is is not a bad palette. I'm able to make it work, but this is one of the worst purples I have ever worked with. And the color story as well, I just don't love what I'm getting from it really. I think I've only played with it one other time since reviewing it and it also just was not a good experience. If you take this purple away, the palette instantly is a lot better, but still to me it's just not worth it and I just, I'm not in love with this color blocking combo right here. Moving on to number 18, this is the Rem Beauty Go Go Boots palette. Honestly, you guys, there are not a lot of bad palettes that I tried in the last couple of months. This is not a bad palette. I just want you to know that. There's a bad shade in here. This is a chunky mess, but the rest of the palette is fine. I did a look using this palette, and honestly, the look was stunning. It was one of my favorite pastel looks that I've done on myself, so you can absolutely get a stunning look with this palette, but it doesn't necessarily inspire me, and a couple of the shades in here are duds. This one right here I don't like, and I'm not a fan of this one either. The rest is fine. I think the color story is kind of random. I was able to make it work in a way that it was very, very pretty, but yeah, I mean, it's a solid formula. It's, it's an okay palette, but you'll see with the rest of the rankings why I just like those palettes better than this one. It's not bad but it just happened to fall in 18th place. 17, I'm gonna upset some people here because when I did my original review on it, I liked this palette. Uh, you know, I thought that there's a market for this and I still think that there is, but the longer I've had it, the less I have enjoyed my time with the Hindash Monochromance palette. This is why I do these rankings so that I can come back and update you on how much I'm actually wearing it and how much I'm actually enjoying it. And to me, these shades are just too sheer. It's not a bad palette again, but it's not a formula that is made for me. I think that it is overpriced for what it is. It's an interesting formula, and I know that there's a market of people out there who truly enjoy this. But for me, I just think it's too sheer. I spend a little bit of too much time trying to get looks with this. And like I said, you can get an absolutely beautiful spring look with this. I just think she's expensive for what she is. And don't get upset because I don't like it. I'm just not the target audience for a formula like that. Number 16. This is from Artist Couture. This is Supreme Mobs. So it's a battle with this one for me because I really love the color story here, but what I do not love is the quality. It's a bit of a tug of war for me. So the mattes in here are just fine. It's the shimmers in here that just are not high quality in my opinion. These You can get better shimmers from the drugstore. They're chunky, they're flaky, they don't have enough pigment, they're not creamy at all, they're dry. I'm just not into them, especially for the price point. The hats are really, really great and I love the color story. So I do enjoy this palette and I've created multiple looks with this palette that I enjoy because I like the color story and because you can still get pretty looks despite me not loving the shimmers. I've still reached for this palette so it's not a complete dud but Artist Couture can do better. 
15 is a pricey one. I had a lot of fun with it, but it's a pricey one. <laughs> this is the Dior Eyeshadow Quint in Blue Velvet. It is super duper unique, especially for Dior. And with Dior, it really is a hit or miss for me because the palettes are $63. I did enjoy this, but it's not my go-to if I'm gonna go for a blue look. The finishes of the colors here are velvet, so they aren't shimmery enough for me, it is a sophisticated blue palette. I don't see it as one that I'm going to reach for too much. The colors are very pretty. I don't really love this shadow in here. It's a bit ill-fitting in my opinion. But yeah, if you are looking to wear blue but in a non-glimmery, flashy, shimmery way, this is a good sophisticated blue palette and I do enjoy the quality of this but there are a lot better Dior palettes that I do prefer. It's not a bad palette, it's just not to my taste. 14 is a great palette, I just don't love the way that it looks on me. This is the Melt Cosmetics Gemini 2 palette, so it's a very deep, grungy, rosy palette. Like, grungy rose is what I would rename this palette. So if you like the color story here, you will enjoy this. The quality of this is really great. What I don't like is how deep the colors run and I mean I can see the colors that are in the pan what's in the pan is a lot darker on my eyelid and I also don't love the shimmers that they incorporated I just think they're so dark I need a little bit of lightness to relieve all the grunginess from this one so yeah it's just it's too dark for me but I know there's a group of people out there who definitely like these kind of looks and if you do you will enjoy this but too dark for me 13 is a new one I'm not gonna lie to you about this one I've only used it once, so I would like to use it more. I'm just judging it based on the first time that I've used it, but I just wanted to let you know my decisions are not final on this. This is the ColourPop Sweet As Can Be Winnie the Pooh palette. This is so cute. I almost wasn't even going to try this palette. I was going to declutter it, and I used it one day. I think I was testing the Wayne Goss collection, and oh my gosh. I loved this palette. I love the look. Based on my swatches, everything is also really pretty. It is a bit of a boring color story, but I think the colors have tones in here that are a little bit more unique than what ColourPop usually puts out. So by looking at it, it doesn't look that special, but by use, I think it looks really pretty. I did a nice honey look. I feel like the quality in this is a little bit higher than other ColourPop palettes that I've been trying, and I think it is so cute. I really like this one. I'm ranking it a little little lower because while I did say I like the color story, I like the color stories of all the palettes. I'm going to talk about this one a lot more, but it's a gorgeous neutral palette and I think this is a really good one from ColourPop. Number 12 is one of my favorite color stories that I'm going to be talking about today, but the quality isn't Top notch. This is the Sigma New Mod Palette. I did a whole review on this if you want to check it out. I really liked this palette. This color story is right up my alley. I think it's stunning. There were some slight issues with the quality making it not amazing. Like I find that sometimes Sigma's mattes are a little bit harder to blend. This took a little bit of extra blending work, but the looks that you will get are gorgeous. This is not a palette that you need to watch out for if you are not that good at makeup. The thing with this is the shadows just take a little extra time to blend. They don't blend with ease that a lot of other formulas do, but I think it is a gorgeous palette and for me it's the color story that is pushing this up. Quality could use a little bit of work, but it's not that bad. I still like it, it's totally workable. Number 11 is a palette that totally shocked me and I just think it's because I've been in the summery mood since I've moved to Florida, but the ColourPop in the Limelight palette, I actually put this in my favorites last month. I'm telling you, this is such a fun color story and I was shocked by the quality of these colors here. The mattes have a lot of vibrancy to them and they didn't fade at all, which is what I noticed about a lot of like neon-y, kind of matte shades. I think the color story in here, while it doesn't look that interesting, when it's applied to the eye, the colors all work together really well. It's a certain type of look if you're using this palette. You gotta know what you're in for. But surprisingly, I found it kind of wearable. Kind of, you know, not super wearable, but much more wearable than I was expecting. And I feel like I had a lot of fun with this palette. It's unique in my collection. And it certainly surprised me. I've been loving the looks that I've done with this. So 
This is really, really nice. I recommend it. Number 10 is the Jaclyn Cosmetics Luxe Legacy Palette. This is a collaboration that she did with her mom. I, overall, I think this is a really nice palette. The only things I don't love is I feel like there's some shades that really just look the same on the eye. If you have a medium to deep complexion, a lot more of the shades are gonna look a lot more similar on your eye. So there's some redundancy here, but I think the formula in here is quite nice. It's not what I was expecting for Jacqueline to create. Now, I don't know if that's because this is a collaboration palette and this is what her mom wants, but it seems odd that her first palette was a collaboration palette because we don't really know. Is this a formula? Is it not? It's a little bit more buildable. If I imagine Jacqueline, I imagine Boom Bop Pigment. I don't get that with this, but I like that it's buildable. And I think if you have mature skin, this is a formula that I will really see you enjoying. The shimmers aren't as blingy as I would like, but I think overall it's a very easy to use palette. I mean, it's, it's a neutral palette. It's very solid. I like neutrals, so of course, I like this palette and the quality is solid. Number nine is the Pat McGrath Labs Bridgerton palette. This is Belle of the Ball, the second palette that came out. Within the Pat McGrath line, I'm not as enthused about this palette. It's dupable, it's not as special. But generally speaking, when I line it up with the rest of my collection like I am today, it still is an absolutely gorgeous palette. I love Pat McGrath's formula for a reason because the last time I ranked this palette with the rose palettes, people were like, you're just biased. I'm a little biased, yes, but no, this is not as good of a palette in the Pat McGrath line with her other palettes. But that doesn't mean it's not a great palette. So I really do enjoy this. I love this kind of chartreuse shade right here. This is a little bit more sheer than I would like, but surprisingly, it's quite fun. This glimmer is absolutely everything. These blend great. It's a great quality palette, and I still really do love the colors. So I've still been enjoying this palette. And since I've been wearing so many rose tones lately, this one has been a great one for the rose tone looks that I've been wearing. Number nine, little out of my comfort zone but I cannot deny the quality and the color story. That is the Huda Beauty ColourPop Blue and Green. Isn't it very interesting that the counterpart to this that launched with this was the very last palette? This one does not have the issues that the purple orange has and it's not my color story. I haven't reached for this very much other than the privacy of my own home at night to play with but I think the quality in here is really nice. The cake liner formula is absolutely amazing. I would love to see Huda come out with more cake liners maybe in an individual format very pigmented easy to blend and surprisingly the colors work very well with each other it's quite a cohesive palette definitely out of my comfort zone but I had a lot of fun with this one the shimmers aren't top of the notch but it's the masks that are super impressive to me so if you feel like you would use this or if you just want to add something to your collection that you might not have this is really really fun number eight this is not a new launch i am late on this it was sitting in my room for a couple of months but i finally got to pull out the sydney grace be mine palette this is such a fabulous palette i mean i wouldn't expect anything less from sydney grace they have some of the best quality eyeshadows that you would ever try. If I had to completely redo my makeup artist kit, I would definitely incorporate a lot of Sydney Grace individuals. The mattes are super buttery and blendable. The shimmers give you so much impact. Quality wise, 10 out of 10. It's not a palette that I've been reaching for as much lately. It doesn't contain the rosy tones that I've been into or the pastel tones that I've been into. It's quite a muted palette. So I haven't been as likely to reach for it, which makes this not at the top. If I was ranking purely on quality, this one might be number one. But yeah, I don't know. I haven't been as inclined to reach for this for the color story, even though it is a very neutral color story, but it's a great quality palette. <laughs> I think I completely miscounted. So go by the numbers on the screen, but this is number six. This is the Adept Cosmetics and Heather Austin collaboration palette. Indie formulas, man. Of course I love this because of how shimmery and reflective and metallic the shimmers are. There is a couple of things that I've noticed now that I've had this palette longer because I'm very new to the Adept formula. One is that I notice the mattes fade very quickly, so make sure you're using your best primer. And I notice they blend out 
a lot. So I have to keep building and reapplying the more that I layer. And I do get pretty bad at creasing with this, but that I kind of expected because the shimmers are so extremely wet. But the color story on this is amazing and I love the looks that I can get and I don't know how Adept is able to pull these colors out. They're so unique. So for me, it's the inspiration and the uniqueness that is pushing this towards the top. Just know there's a couple of things that you should be aware of. Make sure you wear a really great primer to get the best wear out of this palette. But yeah, I've been enjoying creating looks with this. I never really do anything too complicated with this palette because the shimmers are so beautiful. I just pop one or two colors in the crease and pick a color for the day that I want all over the lid and it is so stunning. Number five is the palette that I have on my eyes today. Yeah, it's gorgeous. So this is a, another indie palette. This is the Cleonade Cosmetics and Emily Violet Marie collaboration. I did a whole dedicated review on this. This is a dragon fruit palette. Oh my gosh, you know, Cleona definitely creates one of my favorite formulas. I was quite surprised by this. In the beginning when I saw it, I wasn't too sure about the color story because there's a lot, a lot of pink in here. And I'm not saying I don't like pink, but I wasn't too sure on the versatility of this palette. I still kind of feel the same. Every time I've reached for this palette, I've pretty much gotten like a pinky look with this. And then there's pops of green. So if you don't like pink, you're not going to like this palette. Though I was able, as you can see, I created quite a pretty purple look. But you are limited in that sense if you do not like pink and purple. Really impressed with the formula that Cleona pulled out here. The shimmers, the multi-chromes, the duochromes, top of the line. One of the best that you can get. It is a crazy palette for me, so I have to like sit down and really think about the look that I want to create but the quality is super beautiful and just look at my eyes the texture and dimension you get from these shades are absolutely insane so to create today's look I'm gonna tell you I started off with strawberry pear this is more of a satin shade and I blended this all over my crease to kind of blend out over everything because I also have a peach blush on so I wanted that to be pulled together and this even though it is a satin it looks stunning all over the crease and then I use the shade Exotic right here in the outer corner. This is a bit shimmery for the outer corner, but I still was able to make it work and added a little bit of depth. Then of course for the depth in the outer most corner of my eye, I used Prickly the Dark Purple because I wanted to start bringing in the purple elements. So I blended that in the outer corner. Again, even though it is a shimmery shade, it looks gorgeous and just fine in the crease. We're going all glimmery if we're using Cleona anyways. And then all over the lid, I have Infusion. I hadn't used this color all over the lid, so I wanted to today. I mean, the look on the eye should speak for itself. I used a finger to apply it. I do recommend using fingers. And then I repeated the same process on my lower lash line. The only thing I did different on my lower lash line is I used a little bit of Dragon Teeny on the inner half down here just to add a little bit more interest to the look, but she's gorgeous, right? So anyways, that's my number five palette. Number four is a surprisingly high palette, but I keep reaching for it and I just, I love it every time. This is quality at its finest, you know. At the end of the day, no matter how much I love a color story, if the quality is there, I'm more inclined to reach for it. That is the NARS Summer Unrated Palette. I actually first passed on this when it launched. I thought it was so boring. It definitely is a repeat of what NARS has already launched. But this is a dang good formula, you guys. And like I said, I've been wearing a lot of rose tones. So this has been the palette that I've wanted to reach for. The mattes blend themselves out. The shimmers, while more subtle, they're very pretty and they definitely complement the mattes in here. There's a couple of glimmery shades if I want a little bit more oomph. And both of the glimmery shades that they happen to put in here were great choices let me just say that so if you're looking for a good reliable palette with a lot of colors I think you will enjoy this is it anything unique in your collection if you have a lot of palettes no but I just feel like there's so many colors put in here and every single one is great quality and I feel like they aren't too repetitive as well. Maybe a couple of the browns, but other than that, it's a really well curated palette. So that's a surprise. I was not expecting that to rank so high, but I keep reaching for it. So I, 
that speaks for itself. I have a lot of palettes to choose from and I've been choosing to wear that one. Number three is actually a surprise to me as well. I know I like this palette, but I was surprised at how often I was reaching for it. I haven't reached for it in the most recent couple of weeks because I've had so many palettes to try. But when this first came out, I was using it nonstop and feeling so inspired every time I grabbed for this palette. And that's the Natasha Denona Pastel palette. I mean, Natasha's a genius when it comes to curating colors. Even if it doesn't appeal to me at first, once her palettes are in my hands and I start playing with them, I see the genius behind her work. Even if I don't see it, I still am grabbing for her palettes all of the time. So of course, number one, her quality. It's just amazing. But I've had so much fun creating pastel looks during the spring and this palette has continued to inspire me to create different looks. There's so much versatility in this palette. Didn't think I would end up using this a ton, but I used it a ton. It's like how I felt about the Circle Loco palette. It was so crazy, I wasn't into it, but I kept reaching for it because there were so many looks that I was inspired to create. I feel the same about this one. So yeah, I had to put this at number three. This is probably my favorite palette for spring. One of my all-time favorite pastel palettes. So easy to work with, and it's a truly luxurious palette for just being pastels. All right, you guys, number two and one. I'm not going to talk about them too much because they are ranking the same that they did in my original rose palette rankings. They're still top, 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 even of this long list. So number two is the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Dreams palette. Charlotte killed it with this one. I've been asked, is this better than Fire Rose? I wouldn't say, I wouldn't go as far as to say that, but it definitely is like pretty much almost on par with it. It is still a really great palette and the best part about this over Fire Rose is you can actually buy this. This one is available. This is such a stunning palette. <sighs> She's expensive, okay? But this is the best that Charlotte Tilbury can produce and it's amazing and it looks stunning on the eye and it's so easy to use. You don't need to think about a look that you wanna create. I've been talking about all of the rosy tones that I've been wearing. This is a rosy tone palette that I can reach for completely thoughtless. Just knowing I'm gonna get a beautiful Full, rosy look. This is a great one. The mattes are like butter. The shimmers are super duper metallic and not dry like some of her other shimmers. Incredible. Numero uno. I mean, this is just the ultimate palette. I think this is m way better than his first palette for some reason. I'm much more inclined to reach for the Patrick Ta Beauty Major Dimension 2 Rose Palette. There's something about this that is so special. Now, if you don't like rosy looks, don't buy this palette. Your look is gonna be rose no matter what with this palette, no matter what direction that you go. But if you like rosy tones, you are certainly in luck. Please don't buy this online. They're coming shattered in everybody's boxes. So if you can at least get this in person, I would try. I mean, buttery, smooth mattes. I swear these blend better than the ones in the original palette. And then the shimmers are just like the cherry on top. They are super duper dimensional and just everything I want in an everyday rose palette. So this I feel like is not for everybody because the shimmer shades are so dimensional. You might not like that, but I do. Like I love that in fact. So I love this palette. <laughs> I did it, you guys. I ranked all 19 of these palettes. I'm kicking myself for not filming last month because this was a long one. She gonna take a while to edit. But I hope you guys enjoyed this rankings and you found it helpful. I do these every month, so if you like these kinds of videos, make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Obviously, I test a bunch of palettes. Thank you so much for being subscribed to my channel and liking this video. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye, guys. Have a good one.